Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves 2 as Germany episode number 63. It took me 24 minutes. That's nearly an entire episode. 24 minutes to do the air maintenance balancing stuff. I even gave up at the end and just started putting four aircraft in every group. After I was prioritizing some, I kind of looked at the map and decided where are the places we're going to focus. I'm going to focus on this area because we had several events there. Um, I'm going to focus on, obviously, Tonder, Emden, Wilhelmshaven. I focused on Kohlberg and Labau, Palau. I focused on Reykjavik. Reykjavik. I, I don't actually know how to spell it, so I don't know how to pronounce it for the moment. Um, I focused on Dar es Salaam. And I think everybody else just has four or eight aircraft. Oh no, I also focused on Djibouti. I started to look at the places where we might encounter the British. Now unfortunately, with all the aircraft, our maintenance did go up. It, yeah, it's pretty substantial. So here's our positive, 80. Here's our maintenance, 40. Construction, 20. Naval aircraft is now 10. So if we call this 10, 10, 10, 20, 40, that is uh, 90. So we just lump all this in, which means that uh, about 11% of our budget right now is going to naval aircraft. That doesn't seem so preposterous. In fact, our maintenance really seems way too high. I don't, well, I mean, I guess if you have a big budget, you're gonna buy a lot of ships and then be saddled with a big maintenance fee. So, well, that's something I'm going to have to look into at the end of this war. Although, with both of these being fought at the same time, who knows if we have another war coming. In fact, we're blockaded. Um, this is a, a disaster. If it's not something, if we can't, rect, you know, rectify things quickly, we're going to start taking unrest, uh, bad unrest. Now, does it matter if we go to war with Japan at the same time at this point? And the reason why I ask is we could go to unrestricted submarine warfare, which would basically most likely pull in some of the other nations. The only nation we really don't want to pull in, no matter what, is the United States. That will, I mean, Russia would be a very big pain, frankly, just because she would lend to the blockade, make it even harder. Now, in the, like, kind of insanely optimistic from the insanely optimistic viewpoint, let's also take a look at where where are the places we might invade. Northeast Asia is pretty open. Unfortunately, we don't have a point advantage there, but Southeast Asia is pretty well controlled by the British. Uh, we're just not going to be able to invade anything anywhere. And I, I honestly don't understand... 25 to 24... 14. Yeah, I guess they just they just muscle me around with these extra ships. I mean, we actually have more light cruisers and a lot more destroyers, which should be strategically strategic point wise more efficient. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we can defeat this. We're just going to have to fight battle after battle, win them, and hopefully we can come away with eventually a, a strategic point advantage in Northern Europe, or at least not a deficit. Something which I think has never been fixed, which I think is just really, really stupid, is this idea that 10% strategic points is enough to blockade you. Honestly, I think that if you have 10 battleships and I have 9, I, would, I don't think that you'd be blockading me. It's obviously a lot more complicated than that in real life, but that's actually the system that's used in Rule the Waves. That's why that's why that's the example I choose. Uh, so invasion for now, with our budget being so in such bad shape, I think we're just going to leave it alone. Um, we may have to halt one of these ships, probably the Florian Geyer, since she is the longest from being finished. I don't know if this war will go a year and a half. I think I'm just going to halt her immediately because the sooner we halt her,
oh my god, this was negative 9, but it was wrong, and now it's saying negative 12. Oh, the naval aircraft just updated. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? It was negative 9. So the naval aircraft are, okay, probably closer to 15% now of our budget. Uh, let's not look anymore. Taking advantage of our naval weakness in South... Oh wait, they don't have an they don't have an invasion event. Oh my gosh! Stop it! Okay, well, we're doing good work on the submarine side. So this is battle in support of land combat invasion battle. I The thing I don't understand is why didn't I get a chance to... What the literal hell is going on? <laughs> Invasion battles are everywhere. I think we found a bug. Okay, this one is, is real. Attack enemy ships near objective. We do have, oh, damn it. Oh my God, look at this. Ah, <laughs> the naval circles, there's too many of them. Can we turn those off? Radar, air ranges, there it is. Okay, so let's take a look at the air ranges and then let's minimize this because it's gonna be a real pain. Actually, it's gonna be, I assume that we have, oh. Oh yes, we do. We have two carriers here and oh my God, every single Rhineland class is involved in this battle. What? Rhineland, Era, Nord Rhine, Westphalen. What? 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 I I mean I know I have you guys, but how do I? Oh my gosh! I have to use this drop down box, which I've never used before. <laughs> okay. Well. Anyways, let's. Click on you. Which way are we facing? What the frick? What are we invading? What? Are we invading? Okay, I... I just don't understand what's going on. I don't understand. I think the game is out of control. I didn't choose to invade. I didn't choose the option to invade. By the way, completely okay with invading. I just suspect that we're not actually going to be invading when we finish this battle. That even if with the victory, we won't be invading. And uh, that's when I'll be pretty disappointed. Okay, so let's take a look at our naval ranges. This is... Sorry. Okay, this is our naval range, I guess. There, this, this one, okay. Yellow is dive bombers. Purple is torpedo bombers. We actually have medium bombers. This is insane. Are they not being modeled? Okay, no, they are being modeled. Yep, we have medium bombers who can hit the target. I mean, who can actually help out. I don't know how long it'll be until they get there, but let's see what we have. Wilhelmshaven has groups of four. Emden has groups of two flying boats of 10. Are you kidding me? 
Empton has 19 damaged medium bombers. <laughs> what? What is going on with that? Okay, okay, somebody send a dispatch to Emden. I, I can't... Am I living in reality? Is this real? I feel like this game is like playing a trick on me. What? It's like a Tonder has 20 damaged medium bombers. What? what what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> Okay, there's hope. Um, <laughs> Rykovich, which is too far away, I believe. Yeah, too far away. In fact, yeah, too far away. So it won't that one won't come into play. I mean, what the heck am I looking at? The fact that we have two places where uh, uh, I would say, okay, at 95% and 100% respectively of our two air bases of our two medium bomber loadouts are damaged at these air bases. That's, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. But we're gonna be having a good time if it ends up coming to blows here because we have our Sturmbringers and the blue group classes as part of it. Damn it, anyhow. So I think I mentioned this previously. I God, this is just insane. They're Sturmbringers. The Blueguers can be their own division. Why would they pair? Why, 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 why? You, it's so easy. It, it's just, the game just has to put like ships together. So um, let me finish my thought. I have strongly considered, oh my God, they put a Blueger with the Foyer Drakers. I've strongly considered developing a script it would be a pain in the butt because I'd have to, I don't know, I'd basically have to be able to write a game file, a battle file from scratch. But I've strongly considered allowing, uh, having a script which allows you to reorder your battle, uh, your battle line. Um, it's necessary. This is preposterous. First of all, I think that there should be, you should be able to somehow influence the ships which are chosen for battles, um, the battle generator itself. That said, once the battle generator has chosen, and it can still give you something bad, even in my opinion, I mean, in my like ideal, you can still get, as I always use the classic example, you can still get your Atlanta class, like uh, anti-aircraft like cruisers can still get caught in a surface fight that it is not where they're going to shine. That can still happen. But once the battle's generated, at least allow the, the Admiral who if nothing else, this is what he should have control over. <laughs> what ships are in what divisions? <laughs> it's like the only thing an admiral can really control effectively or like completely is at least his order of battle going into a battle. Look at BD. He may not have had con like uh, control of what every one of his ships was doing in the actual fight, but you can you are damn well sure that he had some influence over which you know. You know, you could just go to your admiral. I mean, because I we wouldn't be beady. We wouldn't. We would be, I guess, Churchill. Churchill would be able to. We we're like all three of them, right? Because we control the actual ships as well. So we're like beady and um, Churchill. So we would have between the two of them, they would be able to control which ships are in what division, and they would also not be so stupid as to saddle a twenty eight knot ship with a 20 knot ship that just doesn't make sense nobody would do that nobody but this battle generator okay rant is over game must commence first things first scouting <sighs> two -face search. i don't even know what how two-faced search works Okay. I think that that is even too generous. Let's go to 305. And on the right side, let's go to 35 maybe. I might go to 55 cuz that's the port side. I mean, literally our starboard side, but the side of us that's close to a port. So I think I want to scan a little bit further in that in that direction. Okay, we're going with a heavy cap 
In fact, I might even go with maximum cap. I really want to shoot down all the stuff that's heading our way. No, I'm going to rely on our... Let's see, do we have our... We're going to pull these guys in immediately. Well, I guess we can wait a little bit while, but we want to protect our, our, uh, our big boys. So these are the Valkyries. They still have 50... Oh my gosh, they have 53 heavy anti-aircraft. That's higher than... What? Isn't that higher than our Stoshos one? Which is not in this battle? Is? Oxford. There it is. Stoshel Swine. I can't believe I remembered the name. <laughs> um, 44. Insane. Our Valkyries have more anti air. I mean, it kind of makes sense. They have 24, and these only have 12. Well, fuddy duddy. I would rather have the Valkyrie than the Stoshel Swine. I didn't check, damn it. I forgot to check again, but I. Don't know what's going on with the torpedo mounts. I must have not included reloads, but I could have sworn I did. Anyway, uh, I'm nervous about moving forward because the very first minute, once we move forward, we're going to be fine. But the very first minute, we have to do all kinds of orderings, all kinds of things. We have to ready all the th all the stuff. For now, let's just ready the torpedo bombers and the dive bombers, and we'll see what fighters are capable of joining us after the cap has been deployed. So let's ready this strike. Go to Carrier Division 21, do the same. Ranges are now pretty great. 173 is the minimum. I think we're gonna be just fine on range. And the fighters have a range of two or three. Yeah, they're gonna be able to cover. Uh, the torpedo bomber at heavy, heavy load does have longer range than our fighters. Somebody had comment about that, making, you know, considering making fighter range a priority. I'm still pretty happy that, I mean, I'm still not convinced it's the best thing. I, actually, it may be an okay thing, but I just want to ready this strike. I'm not actually commencing this yet. Um, 13, 14, 15, 14, 11, 14, 11. Okay, that's fine. So these have enough damage that they actually don't, exceed the deck load but this one does uh, does not have enough damage to you know anyway so we'll ready this and again we'll just see what fighters are available after the cap goes up that's both of those um we have to i think we have to choose the search pattern for this as well yes um do we want to just oh my gosh i forgot by the way to go to this one And we do not want to go 300. 130 seems, I mean, this is crazy. 130 even is going to be fine. So you can tell that 160 or whatever it was, that is the limit of our dive bombers. It's going to be perfectly fine. So I mainly want these guys to focus forward because I believe that's where we'll run into contacts first. But I think I'll have the second carrier group. Move this back down to 140. I think I'll focus on the second carrier group having more of a complete search. There's some things we don't need to do, like any flights over these bases. I mean, we don't need to be redundant. That's priority number one. Let's turn off those for a moment. So you're searching like this. Let's kind of imprint this in my head. So you're searching almost to the whatever fair I go. I don't remember what the names of these are. Something islands. You're not quite there. Oh, you're basically right in line with our target area. Should I go 150? I think it's okay to go 150 just in case. Now the two-phase search, as far as I like, I'm, I don't know. I've seen it. I guess I never like really thought what is a two-phase search because I thought it would just be common sense. But it's here, stuck in the middle of recording this vulnerable moment. I can't look it up. I just have to go. I mean, I'd rather know exactly what it is, and I don't. Let's go to 300 for the left. Maybe 285. 
And what is a two-phase search? That means one goes out and then, then another one goes out later? Or is it... I, I know it. Just, you know, not at this moment. I think we'll do something like this. So we'll be doing a, a longer search, but uh, the cone shifted to the left. What I'd like to do is do a search, and we'll also go to heavy gap. I, I would like to do a search over here, but only with um, a few planes. So probably what we'll end up doing is this is this will be our main search. 250, we'll take it down to 240. I don't imagine that we'll need to go, we'll go down to 230 even. I don't imagine we're gonna need to know anything more than this. Um, I wish I could actually increase the number of aircraft that we're going out so that we could get more information. Like if they literally go like this, they're gonna miss so much in the middle. This is like, it's like 50 nautical miles that they're not gonna cover. <laughs> I wish we could just somehow force them to be, I mean, this just, I mean, we can do it manually, I guess, which is what, it didn't work out for us very well last time, but we'll do it like this. Now we have a few other aircraft who can go out. Um, the Stashel Swines. And they do need to stop to deploy their aircraft. Oh, so you already, ah, if float plane priority was already done, then okay, I see, I see what's gonna happen. It's this Germany main force so all the scout planes are going to be used in this already. Yeah, I do want to see what's to the right of me. Otherwise, I would not care about going that much. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where obviously your planes would know. In real life, your planes would know not to go that far on land looking for naval aircraft. I mean, I hope they would know. Okay, it's been 20 minutes just trying to figure out what we're doing here. But I'm very nervous. We have to win this one. I'm truly nervous before the battle. And although those other, I mean, other um, admirals, real admirals, aren't given the luxury of a pause button. However, their preparations lasted a lot longer than 10 minutes. So, so please excuse the delay. These transports, get, yes, I don't, I don't even know what to think about them. Wind, importantly, out of the north. That's actually a good thing, I think. Get you guys up to squad max, which is, yeah, the new squad max is now 24. Get you up to 23, just so I know the difference between um, when you're actually turning into the wind or not. I think we'll keep these guys, no, actually we do want to keep them with the fleet. In fact, I want to cozy on up to the fleet. Well, no, I, I actually, we'll just stay at this distance because we don't want to be preferred as a target Oh, it looks like the uh, Stashel Swines are here. So this is plenty of heavy AA fire. I'm still okay with that. And even the destroyers. Man, we have a lot of anti-aircraft. So this, if we're up against carriers, and if you're a betting man, odds are that we are. With nine carriers uh, owned by the British. Is everything ready? Are we good to go? I'm kind of curious what are these guys going to be doing. So can we ready them for a recon mission? Are they ready already? Uh, I'm just going to let the game do its thing. We'll advance one minute. And we'll see what's, what's actually happening with those uh, float planes now. what's happening there. I'm just going to go another minute, see if that fixes it. Huh. <clears throat> oh, I see. Ready. I'm readying them as groups of one because all for, for recon, that's all you need to do. So we might have a few ships stopping just to deploy aircraft since I don't think we have, or we don't have catapults and they need to slow down to 10 knots to recover them as well. Those are some, obviously some 
non-idealities in the fleet. I'm going to assume that uh, at least two of these guys are okay for escort duty. And I'm going to do the same over here. Definitely have some going up as cap, but hopefully some are remaining... Oh man, I'm I'm not I don't feel like I'm ready for this mission. <laughs> I'm not ready. So yeah, I guess we'll just ready these guys. Get them all ready to launch. Whoever is available. And cuz recon to my opinion is the most important thing is that it happens in the beginning. <laughs> not a whole lot of importance or value placed on recon when you already found them. So I assume that we just want to discover them first. Let's wait a couple minutes for those recon planes. Is it going to tell us even when those recon planes are ready? Okay, let's go down to... Here we go. 16 minutes. Okay, so mark the time. They will be able to launch at 5 o'clock. So it's just early morning and I don't know what would precipitate this kind of invasion event. It's obviously a little bit strange. A lot of aircraft should be leaving very soon. We have some redundancy built in with our second one. They're launching into the wind, good. They are as well, good. And we're obviously at a huge disadvantage being so close to the enemy. Obviously I don't want to accept these kind of battles, but Hands are kind of tied in this case. I think I do want them to close a little bit because I, I want everyone very close to each other so they can all take advantage of each other's anti-aircraft. You're done launching your cap? Yes. So yeah, I do actually want you to turn pretty severely out of the way of the port. Okay, here comes our here goes our recon. Here's one. Here's one. The ones heading north, of course, are a little bit delayed. I mean, I, I don't say that as if, as if it's obvious, but just as if if things were going to go wrong, that's how they would go wrong. This is literally what happened to Jap <laughs> the Japanese carriers at Midway. <laughs> the one float plane that should have been launched that actually ended up discovering the enemy battle group was launched like 20 minutes late. <clears throat> okay. Um, sit and wait, Tortuga. Sit and wait. Actually, we don't want to go 20 knots. I just realized since that's stupidly beyond the maximum of our blukers. So we'll go back, oh, you know what, we'll go down to 19. I know this is kind of annoying and petty for me to be nitpicky about 19 versus 18, but just the faster we're going, the less we, and the more momentum we have when we actually discover the enemy. Doesn't look like our search radar is gonna be important as our visibility is the same. Boy, that main gun range. Shows you what 17-inch guns are versus 16-inch guns. And remember that accuracy is a function of max distance. I don't know how much it relies on it, but it's, it contributes significantly. It just looks like there's a hole right here. Okay, has it been 16 minutes? Yes. I think. It was 4.47. Whatever. Um, so let's go to launch some recon in the directions which we most think the enemy will be. All right, well, let's cover this gap. Okay, maybe I'll do something like here, 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 and here. So five, we'll take one here. Launch. Can I do this? Can I do different missions from the same one? Okay. Let's 
yeah it's changing so it i think it's i think each one's getting its own mission i hope <laughs> i think it is and then one here as well okay let's go to division number whatever um let's launch you over here Okay, so we covered here, 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 here. Let's make sure there's no, nothing to worry about over here. I also wanna make sure there's nothing behind us. And maybe it's also important to make sure there's nothing to the left of us. Although that one might be covered, but let's just do one due west. How much is this? Okay, good. So it is correctly selecting. This is like only 78 nautical miles. Yeah, we'll do something like this. And now let's just launch a few more north. We already covered here, 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 but let's just be a little bit more redundant. One here, and then maybe two to the target itself, target location. Because we don't, we're not gonna probably launch after where this happens, so. This is a long one, 100 and I don't even know what is the deploy light. They only can go 177. Ah, well that's, wait, what? 133. 100, it says it's 145. Did I bring it back a little bit? I did, yeah, okay. Oh, 140. Launch. And probably a few down this way. They, they could be intercepted, so we want a little bit of redundancy here as well. Launch. We have one more. So we only covered this area. I think we'll go like here as well. Launch. We still have one more group of recon, which only has two airplanes. I think we're gonna save that. I don't see any reason to launch those unless we wanna make sure that there's no ships in port over here. I don't think it matters. So we're gonna have some uh, cruisers coming to a stop to launch, which is fine. There goes our airplanes. One here, one here, one here, one here. Nine fighters are taking off from the big Z. Graf Zeppelin, the only one who's not involved in this, of our active carriers. So this is nerve-wracking. Just waiting for those contact reports. Oh god, what happened, what happened? Air combat. Okay, we shot down a recon from this base already. Unfortunately, that means we're already detected. to do I'm not sure what to do well you know what let's just go ahead and bunch up the aircraft are going to detect whatever it is first so you know what go to support go to screen roll
you go to screen roll as well. I think we still have one here. You will go to support roll. Oh, you're supporting our screen. Okay, that's fine. Let's have you change your formation to line ahead perhaps. Okay, very good. You are screening for the Stormbringers. Yeah, I mean, the Stormbringers are all mixed up because of the stupid division organization stuff, but that's fine. Okay, here we go. We're detected. <gasps> there they are. Okay, all right. How do we want to do this? This is not the carriers. This is not the carriers. However, the way Rule Waves aircraft work is you can't prioritize carriers. It's like you have to sink every ship first and then you can get to the carriers. They're like hidden. Okay, well, you know, we did have the two that were over here that we did not use, and now I want to use them. Give us a little bit more information. So we did it here, so let's do here. And we did here, so let's do something like this. I'm looking for their carriers. And we're gonna send our, we're gonna send our, we're gonna launch. What do we hold back? We hold back one group of torpedo bombers. Okay. Do we coordinate the strike? Yes. Are you kidding me? Two hours? Can't wait that long. I, I don't know how it's even possible to... <sighs> okay, well, let's read this um, scout report. They're heading southeast. 519, they were reported. That was 20 minutes ago. They're heading southeast. Huh. Okay, I'm going to rely on this information. We're just going to way overshoot, which is still less than 100 nautical miles. Should we wait for another scouting report? No, just launch. They'll find something. Good luck. We did it. It's... Can't take our finger off the trigger now. Should we get some verifications here? I know we have this group, but I want to save them. They're the, okay. It's very consistent reports. Which means it's probably a little bit further what we do here. I think they'll still find them. Cause yeah. Anyway. And we're gonna collapse in. The, we're basically making the uh, the turtle, the testudo defense. All right. Let's see what's happening here. Where is this taking place? I really wish I knew. So they do have a cap. Aha, there's their carriers. Okay. How do we handle this? I'm trying to keep things ticking along because I, I like the pressure. We can defeat this group in combat. Let's close. Let's close. You know what? No, we're going to close in a big way. We're going to close all the way forward. 
26 on these. 26. And we're gonna we're gonna meet them. Basically, my goal right now is to destroy the fleet as quickly as possible, so that my the remainder of my fleet of uh, my carriers can focus on the non-battleship groups. Okay, from you, this is still this is still in striking distance. I guess we have to do it. Oh my god, I struck with the wrong carriers. Okay, um, that was a mistake, but a fortuitous one, I would say, because now we can launch everything. Definitely want an escort. We can launch everything at these... Let's not use the group of six. Let's see, uh, 11, not the group of one, 14. 39 we have well we have enough we have room for six that's for sure okay we'll take the six then uh, fighters we want both fighters even though they're both part of the big Z we'll take them I'm um, sorry it's like <laughs> most of your I probably made that mistake already earlier but most of your um, <laughs> Your payload is going to be fighters, but I need them. I need them. Okay, we can do it. This is going to be a hundred meters, not a uh, hundred nautical miles, I mean, for them. You know, you see NM, by the way, if you, I work with small things and I can't help but think that that's nanometers. <laughs> NMI, I believe, is probably nautical miles. Okay, let's launch. Fortuitous mistake, I would say. I don't know if it is actually fortuitous, but look at, I'm, I'm pretty happy with Okay, everyone should be on the same course here. 329 or so. That's actually fine. You can be No, no, actually that's not fine. You want to be more less, sorry, less than yeah, 328. How about 327 from you? And 326. That's fine. Okay, very good. Here we go. It's fine, you can stop and launch your flow plane. I think you'll catch up. If not, we'll need you as ca uh, just your anti-aircraft to help the carriers. Okay, so far so good. Breathe, remember to breathe. Problems with temperamental engines. On the Valkyrie? Why would she have temperamental engines? <sighs> Whatever. Okay. Air combat shoots down. I want to know where this is happening. I really wish they would. Okay, I know it would be kind of cheating, but. We would at least want to know which of our aircraft is not returning. And I have no way of determining that right now, which is a little bit annoying. Okay, they are close. They are just, oh, that's their scout. Okay, that's fine. They're gonna see our whole force and that's fine. We're already, we're, we're basically in our testudo form, the Roman legions. Uh, yeah, we're in our testudo form. We're ready for the <laughs> aircraft. You probably wouldn't want to be this compact. And there is something, but that something is battleships. I didn't expect that. All right, that's fine. Just unroll into your battle line.
Ryan is a four dragger, okay. This one's actually not, oh no, she is hamstrung as well, damn it. Yeah, we probably should get all these guys off of, um, it doesn't matter. Where is this, oh my god, the strike is coming. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so I don't want to have to do this by hand, please don't make me. Guys, get out of the way and let the big boys play. What are you still doing? I think that AI should know to get out of the way. I thought it did. It's just a small, I would say a minorly disappointing result here that they didn't in this case. Oh, you say there's some ships nearby. Well, it would have been nice to know earlier. We are the ones who land the first hit. That always gives me some kind of moral edge. This is a very nice ship, 42,000. Yeah. We'll probably be penetrating each other at no matter what range. Certainly our Sternbringers will. And our Sternbringers are more than a match for these guys. They threw away basically all of their displacement and speed. So while I won't be able to outrun them or dictate the battle, once we're engaged, we are, I would say, decidedly superior. And all we need to do is wait, because something very interesting is about to happen. The sky is going to be darkened by the wave of our planes coming in. Another good hit, indefatigable, that's always been one that for some reason my tongue doesn't like to pronounce. 14 inch guns on her. Really, these are true battle cruisers. I mean, they probably don't belong duking it out with my obviously superior ships. Yet here they are, and we're not going to uh, complain about it. It can lead to a very good result for us. Okay, we're approaching the enemy ships. So this is what I want to do. I just want to sync these things very quickly so that our, when our actual Are you, you're going to a two, so move this way. Um, so that when our carriers and their strike groups are released, they can actually go after the enemy carriers. Okay. So Sturmbringer and the Starlornes Ungetum were both hit, but neither penetrated. So I said we'd both be penetrating each other a lot, but turns out that's not true. The five inch deck on this thing was up to the task. Ah, that's not too surprising. And here comes the enemy, or here comes our, our carriers, I mean our carrier air groups. Um, two 16 inch hits on the bar floor, which is the 16 inch gun one. So we do want to take her out. She's a priority. She's basically my um, Sturmbringer class. Two hits, uh, 17, oh, and a 17 inch hit, and another 17 inch hit. Well, that's painful. I really don't think that they're gonna be Surviving that, not surviving, but what's the date on this? At, what's our range? 14,300, we're definitely penetrating. Yeah, unless they have 15 inch belt. And if we hit the deck, we're definitely not penetrating. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have to wrap this episode up here. Oh, just when things started to get interesting, too. So I'll let you stare at this, and this will be the last minute before we put a huge cliffhanger in. My apologies, but 49 minutes. Oh, God, it's going to roll over. That's okay. I'm going to let it this time, because if you've <laughs> stayed with me this long, hopefully you aren't frightened away by 15-minute episodes. Um, I'm going to go... I'm going to just spend the my like <laughs> the rest of my existence until this next video pondering how the hell I'm supposed to do carrier battles. 
and uh, we'll see if we end up getting something right. Obviously, this this is a this is a big 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 battle. This essentially dictates the war. This is Midway. This is everything. This is Jutland Mid Midway. This is Tsushima. This is any any of those decisive battles. Here we are, and we'll see how it turns out for us. So, until the next video, sorry for the cliffhanger. Thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.